Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to NetTouch. Okay, today I wanted to talk about vertical text, the easiest way to achieve it. I was trying to do it earlier this morning and I took to Twitter and uh, there were a lot of interesting responses, so we're going to go over the best solutions. Uh, the first thing was I decided, let's say we have a heading with NetTouch and I want it to display vertically. Uh, of course you can do, uh, like with CSS3, rotate, but the problem with that is it'll also rotate the text, in our case 90 degrees, so that you would have to tilt your head uh, to read it. No, that's not what I wanted. I just wanted every letter on top of it, almost like letter display equals block. So then I thought, okay, well then we need to wrap uh, maybe like a span around each letter. But you could do that manually, but then you can't deal with dynamically generated text, whether it's from a CMS or something like that. Some of you mentioned on Twitter to put a break tag after each letter. Nah, that's kind of lame. Uh, better would be, one better way would be to use JavaScript, but we're going to find actually in a moment there's a way better way than this. So my first thinking was, okay, do it dynamically with JavaScript, and uh, it was early in the morning and I was doing something stupid like uh, using jQuery.map to filter over the array, which is lame and too time consuming. A uh, better method would be to do something like get elements by tag name, h1, and then get that very first one, and then just override its inner HTML. So h1 that inner HTML equals, and then we're going to wrap within span tags, plus h1 that inner HTML, and then we're going to split them, and we're just going to every new letter will be added to its own uh, key in the array, and then finally join them back together. But what we'll use as a separator is a closing span and an opening span. That way, each one is contained within span. And then finally, let's create the closing ta span tag for the very last item in the array. So that is one easy way to do it. If we view it, all we need to do now is style and do h1 span display block, and this will work. Okay, as you can see right there, that works, but it then depends on JavaScript, and especially for something like this, it's very likely that your layout will then be JavaScript dependent, otherwise it would screw up when JavaScript is disabled. Okay, so then we started thinking uh, on Twitter, you guys were helping me out, uh, maybe we could do something like set a width. So you could do h1, and you could set a width, and let's say we set a width of 50 pixels on it, and a font size of 50 pixels. Now, that's not going to work inherently on its own, but what you could do is something like word wrap, and set that and do like break word. And you can do it like that, but then you still run into issues where like, um, something like, what if we did it lowercase? This might screw it up. Yeah, and then you end up with something like that, so it's confusing. The coolest way that I found, and this came from, his name was Paulo on Twitter, is check this out. If we do a space between each one, and I've realized in the wild I have seen people do this before. So then we can get rid of that, get rid of that, and then we'll do something like font, or I'm sorry, width equals 1m. And now it works. Isn't that amazing? It works really well. You can set a font size of 90 pixels if you want, and that's still going to work. And the key is because uh, there's a space after each one, and the way M's work is the width. So that work seems to work just fine for anything you need. So if we bring that down to 5 pixels, no matter what, that's going to work just fine. So long morning doing a lot of stupid JavaScript when it could be accomplished with a single declaration. So. Believe it or not, that's the quick tip. Let me know what you think. If you have any other ways or different ways or um, questions, concerns, let me know. And always visit net.touchplus for more screencasts, tips, and tutorials. Bye.